Today, we are checking up on one of my smallest ant species. The yellow meadow ant, as it's commonly known, is a small yellow colored ant. In the wild, they live a lot lower down than normal ant species. When I originally looked for queens of this species, I ended up giving up as I simply didn't see any workers in the nearby area. But as nuptial flights came around, small anthills started to emerge out of the ground. This was truly a sight to behold. The ants came to the surface, set away their male and female elates, and once the nuptial flight days were gone, the anthills disappeared once more. For those who don't know the term nuptial flight, this is where an established ant colony sends out the next generations of queens to the world. In a swarm of ants, male and female elates mate. The queens are then fertilized and start their own colony. This is where our story starts. I captured five queens in the summer of 2020, and in the fall of 2020, the first workers started to emerge. Now these workers were smaller than regular workers and lived a shorter life, but they had a very important role, to help gather food to the next generations of workers. As 2021 rolled around, the colony was slowly growing in numbers and seeking more and more food. But only a few weeks later, the colony would have a deadly faith. A drop of honey had entered the nest. The news of the honey reached the colony and more and more workers came to feast. But what they didn't know was that this honey was a lot more sticky than usual. The following morning, 90% of the colony had drowned in the honey in their excitement of the new food. Sadly, I don't have any footage of this as it was a truly heartbreaking moment for me. To avoid this, I have since fed the colony sugar water in cotton balls as they can suck on the cotton without being able to drown. Sadly, 2021 was far from over. Over the summer, the colony slowly lost their confidence. I had attached a small feeding area, but I didn't see many workers forage out there. One day upon my checking up on them, I saw something truly horrible. The colony was seemingly in the middle of killing a queen. Now I had many theories to why this would happen, but personally, I believe this was happening because the colony was starving, and this cost the life of a queen. Not only had the fifth queen died, the fourth queen had also lost her legs. Again, it seemed like they had been cut off and fed to the colony. This is truly horrific and I immediately detached their old foraging area and started feeding them inside the test tube once more. As 2021 came to an end, the colony was slowly recovering, although still having a fourth queen being handicapped. All in all, the colony looked good and I couldn't wait to see how they would do in 2022. And here we are, 2022. Now as you can see, I've changed the setup. The old test tube had dried out and the colony desperately needed a new home. This small vacation nest seemed fit for them. Now this year has started up with some mixed emotions. On one hand, the colony had more brood than I had ever seen before and it may be the long-awaited year where the colony simply explodes in numbers. But on the other hand, we started this year off with losing the fourth handicapped queen. She sadly didn't make it, and these are some of the final moments I captured of her life. Now my big concern was that she was starved to death. By looking at the two other queens, you can see that Gasser is quite full. The gaster is where they store the food, and therefore a full gaster means a fed queen. The now dead queen seemed unfit as her gaster wasn't full, causing her to maybe starve to death. What concerns me the most about this is the third queen currently seemed to have the same faith with quite an empty looking gaster. And personally, I don't see her surviving this year. Now the scientific name of the yellow meadow ant is Laceus flavus. If you read up on this species, you'll read that some say the colony is polygynous, meaning they're able to accept multiple queens. 
but just as many sources say they aren't. Now my colony seems to be slowly losing queens, pointing at the gene laceous flowers maybe not being polygynous. Now you may have already spotted the blue workers running around inside the nest. If we go one hour back, you'll see my little experiment I made to show how food gets shared within an ant colony. As the colony has grown a lot in their numbers, they are now using their new feeding area. This is simply just a box to represent the outside world, where they may find dead bugs, leaving nutritious goods for the ants. Today, in their feeding area, a cotton ball with some blue liquid has fallen. It doesn't take long for the foraging ants to find the new mysterious ball. Tasting the blue liquids, the workers quickly notice that this is some delicious sugar. She takes a good sip, filling her social stomach over the course of a few minutes. Slowly, her stomach grows and more workers come to the feeding site. Once she is full, she returns to the nest, leaving a food pheromone trail behind her. This way, any unsuspecting workers that may pass by the trail will pick up the scent and turn towards the new food source. As the worker enters the nest, she makes the most of it, quickly emptying her social stomach to a nearby worker. You see, this is the way ants live. It's based around an aging system. When a new worker encloses, she lives inside the nest, nurturing and taking care of the colony's young. As she grows older, she'll start to forage outside. But before she's old enough to leave the nest, she stays inside. The outside workers come home with the food that they have found and deliver it onwards to these homebound workers. This way, the old generation of the workers go out and risk their life while the young is home spreading the food among the brood, the workers, and perhaps, if the queens are lucky, they also get a taste of the blue sugar. But you have sadly already seen what happens if they aren't that lucky. Within the first half hour, the workers of the colony have spread the word of food and more have come out to a feast. Inside, the blue sugar has been shared between many workers, and even some larvae. Now here's something interesting. The ant brood has three stages. Egg, larvae, and pupae. In the egg and pupae stage, the colony doesn't need to feed them. Only in the larvae stage is food required. Now where I believe the colony only fed protein to the larvae to make them grow, the blue larvae tells a different story. Making me still learn things about this ant colony, even after entering the second year of keeping them. To complete the colony's need, a dead cricket is also being dropped inside the feeding area. Although this is quite a big meal, the workers don't get food very often, leading them all to go all in on the protein hit. Just like before, one worker quickly turns into many. As this is a small cricket, I wanted to see if the colony would drag it into the nest. Preferably, ants will always drag the food inside the nest to keep it safe from outside scavengers. Sadly, this isn't always possible with big insects. But it didn't take long before the workers noticed that the head could be carried around. Although it did take a good 20 minutes before the workers finally managed to drag the head inside. While the head was being transported, it seemed the news of the insect body got turned down as all the focus was on the head. Inside the nest, a feast was starting. Now the ants had everything, a good food supply both in carbohydrates and in protein. This protein will now feed all the hungry larvae, helping them all to grow into the ant they are meant to be. And this is where we end today's video. I predict that the colony this year will hit the 1000 worker mark. Already now, the colony is set to triple in size if all of the brood survive. The big question is, how many queens 
will say hello to 2023. I sadly don't think everyone will. But one final look at the colony, there is a lot of eggs, more than I've ever seen before in this colony, meaning that we'll hopefully have even more larvae than we already have at the moment. And I personally can't wait to see how the colony will do this year. And yeah, that has been it for this little mini documentary uh, story of their life. I don't know what to call it. This right here is the Lacius Flavus or the Yellow Mediterranean in real life, as you can see. Uh, well, not the biggest setup. Um, but yeah, I would just like to say thank you all for watching it to the end of the video. And let's just bring the members up. Thank you to all of the members, but a special thanks to the four Halver family members. We have Medical Car Case, Number 9, Ants Norway, Antscapes, and finally our new upgraded Halver Helper to Halver family member, Victor D. Thank you all for being family members and thank you all to all the other members and thank you for watching it to the end of the video. Do you have a Lacius Flavus or Yellow Meadow Hand? Do you want one? Let me know in the comments down below. And else, I'd just like to say, don't forget to like and subscribe, become a member today if you like, and I will see you all in another video. Bye!